By the way, in the future, if you see me wearing the ma same makeup, same clothes, that's because I film most of my videos on one day, and then I'll just edit and upload them throughout the week. Hey, it's Mel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, every Wednesdays I post unsolved true crime cases, as well as missing persons cases, and today's case is about a pilot who vanished after spotting a UFO and has not been found since. Before we get into this strange case, I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who watched my recent video on my disability story and my diagnosis. That was a really difficult video for me to film. But the amount of comments that I got after just posting that video within the same day was insane. I just would like to say how grateful I am for all the support that I've been given. And I hope that you are all doing well. Hope you're having an amazing day. If you're not, I'm sorry. I hope tomorrow is better for you. So this case revolves around a pilot by the name of Frederick Malintich. He was born in 1958. He was a pilot who had a total flying time of 150 hours. He held a high four class rating, which meant that he was able to fly his plane at night. And he needed to follow all of the rules of the VFR, which is basically flight rules. Frederick did have a family and a girlfriend, and he did not have good qualifications in order to be accepted into the Royal Australian Air Force, though Frederick did enlist two times. I'm going to tell you a little bit more information about Frederick before we get into the incident that occurred. Now, Frederick was a UFO enthusiast. He did believe in UFOs, and while he was out flying, he always had that fear of being attacked by a UFO. So just bear that in mind. At the time of the following incident, Frederick was studying to be a part-time commercial pilot. However, Frederick did fail multiple commercial licenses. Being a pilot takes a huge responsibility, and this all occurred in Australia, by the way. Frederick had a wild side to him. He was a bit rebellious when it came to flying. He was facing prosecutions of him purposely flying into a cloud on two occasions. On another occasion, he also strayed into a controlled zone in Sydney and received a warning for that. On Saturday, the 21st of October, 1978, in Bass Strait, Australia, Frederick, who was age 20 at the time, radioed into Melbourne Air Traffic Control at around 7.06pm to report that an unidentified aircraft was following him at 4,500 feet. Through the radio call, he was told that there would be no traffic at that level in the sky. On this specific day, Frederick was doing a 235 kilometer training flight from Melbourne along the south coast of Australia. He did have a private pilot's license at the time. Frederick described this unidentified aircraft as huge and it had four bright landing lights on it. Frederick was unable to confirm what type of aircraft it was and it flew overhead of Frederick, passing a thousand feet at high speed. Frederick then reported that the aircraft was approaching him and said that the pilot of this aircraft was probably toying with him. At this point, the aircraft was orbiting above him. Frederick also said that the aircraft had a shiny metal surface and it was emanating a green light. Frederick began to experience engine problems with his plane. The operator of the Melbourne Air Traffic Control Tower asked Frederick to identify the strange aircraft. Frederick simply replied, quote, it's not an aircraft, end quote. His radio transmission was interrupted by a unidentified strange noise which was described as, quote, metallic scraping sounds, end quote. All contact was then lost. Frederick was never seen or heard from again. A large search was conducted, including an RAAF Lockhead P3 Orion aircraft, along with, along with an ocean-going traffic ship and eight other aircrafts. This search covered up to 1,000 square miles. Nothing was found and the search was ended on the 25th of October, 1978. During the investigation, a DOT, which stands for Department of Transport, investigated Frederick's case. And after a long period of time and nothing was found of him, he was presumed dead. But he was last seen near Cape Otway. Remember that place because it comes into play later. Five years after Frederick and his plane went missing, an engine cowl flap was found and washed ashore on Flinders Island, which is located north of the island of Tasmania. In July 1983, the Bureau of Air Safety Investigation asked the Royal Navy Research Lab if this engine cowl flap had been from Frederick's plane. This cowl flap was identified as being part of a Cessna 182 aircraft and was identified using a limited number of serial numbers. And these numbers were also connected to Frederick's aircraft, so there is a high possibility that this 
engine cowl flap was from Frederick's plane and that was the only thing that was found. The following information that I'm going to talk about occurred 20 minutes right before Frederick's transmission ended. On the night right before Frederick's disappearance, which reminder was the 21st of October 1978, right before the end of his transmission, a photographer was near Cape Otway named Roy was taking pictures of the sunset at Roy took around six to seven photos and in two of these last photos you can see what looks like black shiny lump in the water and by the last photo you can actually see this aircraft in the sky. Roy ended up sending these pictures to an Australian newspaper and by the time it hit the newspaper everyone knew. It is confirmed that this photo does not have a developing error the photos were also sent to a UFO research group who confirmed that the shiny lump marks of the aircraft was not mud, it was not dirt and they do believe that this photo is in fact of a UFO but bear in mind it's kind of their job as UFO enthusiasts, researchers so they may believe that that's a UFO but you may not opinions can differ. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the theories now there are a lot of theories as to what happened to Frederick People think that this truly was a UFO and, and Frederick was abducted. He had spoken to his girlfriend six days before his disappearance about the possibility of him leaving on a UFO. On the day that he disappeared, he was travelling to an arrival airport, though he never told the people at the airport that he would even be arriving and they wouldn't even be ready for his arrival. That same day, Frederick told his girlfriend that he would be meeting her around 7.30, which doesn't really make sense timeline-wise with the flight trip he was planning to make that day. The following theory is that Frederick faked his own disappearance. From what I can gather, Frederick did not have any mental illnesses. The theory goes that the transmission he gave was fake. And Frederick had life jackets on board his plane. Which there is a possibility that Frederick had survived somehow and he's living somewhere else, though that's a really slim chance to be honest. At the time of his disappearance, friends and family of Frederick confirmed that he didn't have any mental illnesses and he was completely fine. A little bit of evidence to support the theory that Frederick faked his own disappearance is that on the night of his disappearance or slash abduction, eyewitnesses reported seeing a small light plane making a landing not far away from Cape Otterway. Other people think that Frederick had a problem with his plane during flight, which caused him to nose dive into the water. I admit that the ocean is very large. We have a lot to discover with most of our Earth's water unexplored. However, with a large search of a thousand square miles that was conducted after Frederick's disappearance, how is it that nothing be found? The next theory that I'm moving towards is it's called the Tidal Horizon. The theory is that Frederick was under the illusion of a titled horizon, which is when a pilot puts their plane into a graveyard spiral, twirls around in the air during the day when the sun is at its highest. When a person puts their plane into graveyard shift, it, it can make it look like the sun is brightly reflecting off the plane. Graveyard spiral is also known as upsloping or downsloping runaway. An upsloping runaway can create the illusion that the aircraft is higher than it actually is leading to a lower approach which would explain the strange lights that Frederick was seeing which very well could have been his own plane reflecting from the water due this is something that can happen and something odd that doesn't really make sense is that at the time Frederick was seeing the supposed UFO the aircraft did not pick up on any radars so here's my final thoughts on the case it is odd that the plane apart from one small piece of it was found but nothing else was found nor was frederick even though there was a large search conducted like i said before i'm leaning more towards the titled horizon theory we all have different beliefs and opinions and me i like to remain more skeptical and logical i'm not saying that is not possible anyway what do you think did this pilot simply fake his own disappearance do you think that it was an engine problem of the plane and he drowned? Or do you think that he was really abducted by the UFO? That is all I have for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>